First of all, Elvis Presley is known as two retreats. Or there's his honeymoon, which honeymoon mansion, where he took Priscilla for their honeymoon, and has now turned into a thousand dollar a night rent where you could spend your honeymoon in the same place Elvis did. It's usually rented out to Japanese couples who are apparently the only ones that could afford to go there. It's thousand dollars a night. This is the honeymoon mansion. The place where we went to was a uh, secret hideaway and uh, where he would take his girlfriends up there for the weekend to get away from it all. And it was only a two-bedroom little house with a white stucco two-bedroom bungalow, as we call over here, with a kidney-shaped pool, lots of palm trees to hide it from the road. And uh, that's where he used to take his uh, girlfriends. And uh, believe me, they were very willing to go. And I think in some of the pictures that I've taken, um, you'll see around the pool, you'll see a seat for Elvis, and there's another one that says Colonel Parker on it. So he must have gone there as, well, gone there as well. We we had the keys. We, she was the broker of the place, and she had the keys. And they wanted us to go there and check it out because of, I think maybe Colonel, uh, Colonel Parker was having some friends come over to look at the place or whatever. They wanted us to just pop in there and see that it wasn't a, the, the muddles were all cleared up. There was no booze glasses around. So uh, we went in there, and the place was immaculate. The beds were made, there was no muddles. So um, I had my camera, so I took a lot of pictures. Uh, we didn't have much time, and I thought, well, you know, uh, I'll take some photographs. This is Elvis's hideaway, secret hideaway. So I, I went there and took the pictures, and then when we got back to the office, we called and said, you know, the place is immaculate. So that's one of the main reasons I went there, mainly to check it out, the place out, for Colonel Parker to visit. Just, it was a, just a normal stucco house with a pool. And uh, we went into Elvis' bedroom, and everything in his bedroom was black. The bed was covered with black. This, the furniture in there was all ebony black. And uh, yeah, maybe that must have been his favorite color. Though I think there was pictures of, around the wall. I can't remember. But I know he had a television set, and he was very famous in Palm Springs. If he didn't like the program, he'd shoot it with his gun into the screen, and then he'd order the next day they bring another color, another, another television round. And I think there was oh, I got reports to say that he uh, he had as many as thirteen. That if he didn't like the program, just shoot it with his gun. And uh, of course, he could afford to buy a new TV and. Uh, and I looked at the TV, I thought, well, I wonder how new is that or how often that's been replaced. So then in another bedroom where uh, apparently Natalie Wood used to sleep, that was in pink. And uh, that was very comfortable. And then there was a kitchen area and a nice a big bar. And it was a very big bar. And he had all these crystal glasses, wine glasses with an EP etched on them. And I pinched a couple. And um, then he had two Wurlitzer jukeboxes, one in one room, which are clearly shown in the pictures. Well, all his gold records on these jukeboxes, all his records are on the two Wurlitzer jukeboxes. He probably had another one, but I don't, but you can see these two. And then on the wall were all his gold records. He must have had about 10 or 15 gold records are up on, them, are up on the wall. And um, pictures of you know, of his family all around the room. And the dining room table was set for dinner with wine glasses and candelabra and all that jazz. And not, whether or not he used that, I don't know. Because when I used to interview him at MGM, we were just in a small dining room and uh, uh, we would ask questions. He was a very good host. I didn't particularly like the guy, but we won't go into that. And he was a very good host. And he would always say to us, well, did you, how was your dinner? How was your lunch? Would you like another glass of wine? And uh, was your steak done enough? I mean, he was a perfect so Southern gentleman. Uh, and of course, he should be, because we were all journalists, you know. He had to be nice to us, or otherwise we'd go back and... <laughs> so uh, he was very nice to us. But, uh, yeah, it was very nice walking around there to see. But it was 
certainly not a film star's house. It was just an ordinary person's house. And I guess film stars have to switch themselves off. They're only film stars a certain part of the day, then they got to go home and relax, right? So he had these palm trees and bushes around so nobody could see. Because he used to, he used to like a walk around the pool uh, a la carte, in the nude, and to show off to his girlfriends. You know, he was a very... It's, it's not written up in the papers, but he was a real sex... Uh, sex guy. I mean, he's very interested. Well, he was very interested in sex. Well, look at it this way: if you have all these girls, beautiful girls, throwing yourself at and, and throwing yourself at, at you, and you're a pop star. What are you going to do? Say no? I mean, you're red blooded like everybody else. So, these girls would up there sit around the pool, and Alice would parade around a la carte. All this hype about him, you know, that he went to church and he loved his mother and he did this and he did that. He was just a southern boy from uh, from down south. He never had a brilliant education. He just had a normal education and like everybody else. So all this that he didn't do this and he didn't do that. He, I mean, that was all hype. Just put in the magazines for the girls to swoon over. I mean, he was just like everybody else. And... Uh, Everybody else has got their faults, and he sure had his. And uh, he had a, he had this mafia around him. All the school kids he went to school, boys he went to school with. And after, when he went out, there would be five bodyguards around him, shoving you out away. So paparazzi wouldn't get. It. Not that there was many paparazzi in those days, because it was all control. Now, of course, it's swarming with paparazzi, but. But he had these five, it was called Elvis's Mafia, and they went everywhere with him. And they'd push you out of the way, you know, because, uh, I mean, I didn't like that. But I never, I, uh, I never chased after him. I didn't have to chase after him, but a lot of people did. And uh, he, I wouldn't want to fight anyone in Elvis's Mafia, that's for sure. Most of the stuff you read about him is all bland. You. Uh, you know, he loved his mother, and he took a bath every day, whatever, he, he took a bath every day, and uh, <laughs> didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't smoke, but yet he died of drug addict, didn't he? Whoa. I mean, do you seriously think they would go home and read the Bible? Come on, five guys with all the money in the world, go home, they're going to get all the, they got all the girls they want, they got all the booze they want, they got all the pot they want, come on, they're going to have a damned orgy, you know that.